Good afternoon. Hope everybody's doing good today. Nice warm weather out here. On behalf of the Clinton County Fire Awareness Council, I'd like to welcome you to our drunk driving, distracted driving car crash. The members of the Northeast Fire Territory, Northeast Volunteer Ambulance Service, Clinton County Sheriff's Department, and many other departments have come up with this program to try and show you how big an impact the drinking and driving and distracted driving really has on people your age. Over the next hour or so, Deputy Frank Wells, he's going to be giving you some different statistics on teens and distracted driving and drinking and driving. But there are two that I would like to stress, and that one of those is that every 45 seconds, someone is involved in a motor vehicle accident involving either a drunk or a distracted driver. That's every 45 seconds. And about every 15 minutes, somebody loses their life due to a distracted driver or a drunk driver. Today we have a little skit we're going to do for you. Then Miss uh, Jill Drosh is going to take a few minutes and tell us how distracted, li distracted driving has impacted her life. The scene that you're going to watch, it's not real. Nobody's really hurt, but it can be very emotional. If you feel you cannot watch it, please feel free to excuse yourself. And if you need to talk to somebody, please tell your teacher. They will get you to a counselor. We have school counselors here. We have some local pastors and uh, sheriff's chaplains. They're out here at the ends of the bleachers. If you do need to talk to somebody, by all means, get with one of them. Get with one of the first responders out here. We'll make sure that we get you the, to somebody that can help you. Later, after we're done here, we'd like to invite everybody down here to get an up close look at, at the things and talk to any of the first responders and participants that you want. With that, I'm going to turn it over to Deputy Frank Wells. Good afternoon, everyone. Can everyone hear me? Yeah. I'll, try to, I'll try to speak up. Uh, this is my first time narrating a mock crash like this. Uh, I appreciate being able to come out here and share, you know, me being a police officer to help you guys see everything that you're about to see, okay? Um, so, once again, I'm Deputy Frank Wells. I work for the Clinton County Sheriff's Office. Some of you guys may recognize me from uh, teaching the D.A.R.E. program. Uh, I'm going into my third year uh, next spring. <laughs> Uh, teaching that program. Um, sometimes I come out here to your school and I talk to you guys at career day. Uh, so I've met with a lot of a lot of you guys. And then I'm always out and about. A lot of people come up to me when I'm at Walmart, when I'm out at the fairgrounds, stuff like that, and come up and say hi. This afternoon, you're going to see how first responders such as police, fire, EMS, Volunteers and Good Samaritans can all come together and work as a team to help others. Today we have several volunteers with us. They're out here, they're donating their time and their efforts to show you a situation that can happen to any one of us at any time. Just over the weekend here in Clinton County, we lost a 14-year-old student at Clinton Prairie High School in a tragic accident. This student was a son, he was a brother, he was a cousin, he was a friend, he was a member of the FFA, and he was a 2016 D.A.R.E. graduate that I had an opportunity to teach him the D.A.R.E. program last year at Clinton Perry School. This person was a great kid. He was active in his community, he would do anything for anybody, um, and I saw him as being a great role model. I remember having conversations with him at the fairgrounds during fair week, uh, old hickory days at the tractor pool, the mud bog. Um, he'd always come up and say, hey, Deputy Wells, how's your day doing? Um, he was always polite. He was respectful. He had one of those old souls about him. I introduce this kid to my kids because wherever I go, I take my kids with me and my wife. And uh, he began talking to my boys about his tractor, uh, about football, and my kids' four-wheelers. 
So as I finish up my second year teaching the D.A.R.E. program, I want you guys to know that the decisions that you guys make gonna have a, can have an effect on not just yourselves, but everyone around you. Um, so bad things do happen, okay? Our job today is to remind you that we as adults, we can't always be there beside you to tell you what to do, okay? And what you should not do. So listen to your parents, your elders, your trusted adults, and learn from tragedies like the one that involved Zachary Caldwell and Maria Droche. Okay. So as first responders, disasters like what you will see here today, um, they're the worst calls that we ever have to respond to. We never want to come to scenes like this. Uh, because most of the time, scenes like this, everything can be avoided. As you watch the incident take place, I want you guys to think about several different ways that the incident could have been avoided in the first place. Such as using a simple seat belt, saying no to alcohol, and uh, using, uh, uh, let's see, use your seat belt, saying no to alcohol, and giving your phone to somebody else. So without further ado, let's get started. Hey, fur it up. I like it. Yeah, fur it up. No, that phone sucks. Can you hand me another beer? Whoa, easy. Haven't you had enough already? Besides, you are driving. I'll be the judge of that. I drank way more than this after last week's party, and I made it home just fine. Yeah, I know. I just don't want to get pulled over and be late for post from. It's supposed to be a good one. I'm fine. Quit worrying. It's not like I'm drunk. Give me the beer. Well, okay, here you go. Oh, forget it. We have to meet Rachel, Maddie, and Sydney at school so they can follow us to the party. Oh, yeah. I better hurry. Text Maddie to make sure she doesn't forget. Michael, look out! So what we have here is, appears as though there's been a head-on collision. Vehicles have all over damage. Several injured, injured parties. Looks like there's smoke coming out from the front of the car. So there could be a fire, or that could be, you know, there's a lot of heat. Could be coming from a radiator. Or a hose. Nine one one, where is your emergency? Clinton Central, they're hurt. They might really, really hurt. Okay, hold on just a moment. You said Clinton Central, what's going on? It was a wreck. We wrecked into somebody, and Levi's really hurt. I need to help. Okay, I heard you say Levi's really hurt. You wrecked into someone. Are there two vehicles involved? Yes, there's two vehicles. Levi's hurt. Emma's hurt. Please help us. Okay, we, I'm going to get help on the way, okay? How many people are involved in the vehicle? Do you know? There's four in our car. I don't know how many are in the other. Okay, four people in your car? Uh -huh. All right. Okay, just stay calm, okay? We are going to get the fire and ambulance started out that way, okay? Okay, thank you. Hurry, they're really, really hurt. Okay, we've got them started, okay? Okay, thank you. Anytime we have a crash like this, it's very hectic. There's a lot of emotion. There's a lot of pain. Sometimes people experience things for the first time. Be toned to the scene. Station 7, Station 8, Station 13, Clinton County Medics and Clinton County Units. Receive 
Here's some statistics. Every year in the United States, almost a half a million people are injured or killed in traffic accidents. Of those accidents, attributed to the combination of texting and driving and operating a vehicle while intoxicated. This is a shocking number because this, can, this could all be completely avoided. A lot of these things never get reported to us when it comes to what's going on prior to Fire and EMS's arrival. As you can see, it takes a while for everyone to get here. First unit on scene is normally volunteer fire department and or law enforcement. So officers are going to assess the scene. Same thing with fire and EMS. Their job is to assess the scene, offer first aid. So, most of the occupants inside the cars are able to get out. Therefore, the fire department is going to use the jaws of life to extricate them. They're going to make entry into the vehicles. Here in a moment. The officer is trying to determine the reason for the accident. Normally we have to worry about other vehicles traveling on the roads to and from and near the accident. People standing nearby. We may have to ask them to move, this, move away from the scene for their safety. Rescue 134, fire control. Do you want to say we have a police officer here? Rescue 134, fire control. Sheriff's office. It is normal for just one officer to respond to a scene like this. Rescue 134, clear. You'll notice that they did place a sheet yeah, no, yeah, yeah. Yeah. individual yeah. Copy that you have one We've been informed that that person is deceased.
Landing load is set up. There is one subject that is so significant. It's going to be required to perform from the south for immediate medical assistance. That's why they're calling the phone. Okay, boy. So we'll see if fire personnel are on the phone. Okay, boy. So we'll see if fire personnel are on the field on the other side of the EMS. So there's the opposite of the landing zone for the helicopter responding. Normally we like to land those helicopters as close to the scene as possible. If not, the school setting is clear. You'll see that the officer over here has grabbed a portable breath test. Looks like he's going to offer the opportunity for that subject to test for presence of alcohol. Anytime we have a serious accident like this, we always check the driver for sobriety. does relay education information to keep dispatch informed so that others can also hear what's going on in the other vehicles. the officer goes around the car, he'll see several beer cans on the ground. The officer is going to put those on the hood of his car, document that there appears to be alcohol involved. We're going to start questioning that individual, that driver, about that alcohol. We'll see the lifeline is going, going to make a few circles around us. We're going to look at the landing zone. We're going to determine if it's safe for them to land. We're going to communicate, uh, communication with one person. It's only the fire chief. They'll be setting up that landing zone. Uh, 
only one person communicates with life. Pretty much everything in that hospital. We have one ambulance who's going to leave the scene with a patient. That patient's maybe injured, but their injury doesn't. We don't need to go by lifeline. We don't need to go by helicopter. They can make it to the hospital. Be treated there. You'll notice that the funeral home is not seen. The officer is going to administer standardized field sobriety tests. These tests are standardized. Every officer all over the United States are trained to offer the, the same tests on any on any person. The tests are always done the same way every time. You notice that the driver did not follow instructions. He's moving his head. The officer's telling him follow the stimulus with his eyes. His eyes only don't move his head. Looks like the most severely injured patient has just now been removed from the vehicle. She's still in a lot of pain. You see that her lower left leg is severely injured. She will be our patient going into Lifeline. Right now, Lifeline's making their final approach and will be landing. Our department has put off those cones. The landing zone should be right in the middle of those cones. You'll notice that all the personnel on scene are still working. The helicopter landing, we don't pay attention on that as first responders. We have to remember that patient care and accountability of the drivers are more important than watching them.
I said the offside scene has one subject to claim with handcuffs and there's a back of the street car. We offer them all the opportunities to take a uh, clinical test. And that will be conducted at the same kind of jail. The funeral home is essentially taking just now the subject who has been pronounced deceased. And my client is moving their patient to the helicopter.
So guys, you gotta think, we have to make contact with the family. We gotta let them know what happened. Normally you guys all have cell phones, right? Everybody's on Snapchat, everybody's on Facebook, they're taking video of what's going on. So, when we call your family member and say, hey, you've been involved in an accident, your son's been arrested, uh, it looks like he may have been texting and driving, crashed into another car. He's okay, but he's going to jail. The other person, we got to go with that family member and say, daughter has been seriously injured. She was in the back of a car that driving was drunk. So, mom and dad are freaking out. We're going to find out. Get them here safely. Tell them that it's going to be okay. But we don't know that. All right? Um, we can't drive them to the hospital to, to be checked on. For, for them to get there to check on their, their child. So, after we make that initial phone call to let them know what happened, they've got to drive from Frankfurt from out here all thinking about the worst. Okay? And then, how do we tell a loved one that their, their, their child's been killed in a crash? Can that be very difficult? So, when we do that, we do use our chaplain's service. We do use a pastor. We try to offer all the assistance in the world that we can to that family in that worst time of their life. Okay. So after everyone gets uh, removed from the scene, we call in a record service for each car. We have those cars moved We take them to a secure lot. The family and drivers, uh, owners of the car come back with their contents later. Give me a few minutes and we'll see what else we're going to do here. At this point in time, we do have a guest speaker. I'm going to give the mic to, to Joe Rush. Most of you probably know who I am. My daughter would have graduated with you guys this year. But she was killed in an accident June 20th, almost a year ago. She was texting and driving. And I just want to stress to you guys how important it is when you get behind that wheel. It can take two to five seconds. Your life will change completely with wrong, with one wrong mistake. That's all it takes. That's what happened to her. Maria, she loved life. She loved people. She never met a stranger. We'd only been here three years, and she made so many friends everywhere she went. She, she would light up a room with her smile. This picture, this picture is probably one of my favorites. She, uh, she did not like to see anybody in that sad, anything like that. She could meet a complete stranger in the Walmart, you know, standing in line at the checkout and start a conversation with them. Uh, she loved to help people working at Wesley Manor. She loved taking care of older people. And, you know, it made a big impact on everybody. She was involved in choir. She loved to sing. She was big in FCCLA. She just loved life. And just like many of you, when she was 17, she thought that she had everything going for her. She was taking summer classes so she could still take choir for senior year. The day of the accident, I remember, we were talking about getting her senior pictures done that week. And that never happened. I know most of you guys, I have a lot of you guys on my Facebook that were friends with her. And this is probably the most difficult time I've had. Knowing you guys just had prom, I, you know, I've seen all you guys' pictures. You guys all dressed up so nice. And I wished you know, that was her. But unfortunately, I didn't see that. You guys will all be graduating soon. And it's, 
and you guys have worked 12 years to get to that point. And you get to walk up that aisle, get that diploma, go on to college. You guys are young adults, you guys are starting out in life. You just need to remember that the decisions that you make will impact you for the rest of your life. I know that people think that they're invincible, nothing's going to happen to them, you see it all the time. She thought she was invincible also. Oh, for two to five seconds, she was texting me, I looked up and everything was over. Not only did she, you know, she was hurt herself, but she had hurt other people too. And their lives changed forever too. This is her car. This will be the last time that I will have her car out. said and I think this is one thing. It's a different way of saving lives than, than with the EMS and firefighters. Everybody does, you know, they help save lives. This is a different way of saving lives because it makes you think by looking at this car and what had happened. Two to five seconds. She was pinned at six inches of space between that steering wheel and the seat. She was gone just like that. You guys just get in that habit, just like everybody else. Your phone, this is her phone. There's nothing wrong with it. There was never a scratch on it, I found it in the dash. But this little box is what killed her. Get in the habit of putting this back seat of your car, putting it in the trunk, turning it off. Most of the time you guys are not driving anywhere from 20 minutes to get where you need to go. Your life and everyone else's life out there is not, you know, it's more important. They can wait, a text message can wait, a phone call can wait until you get where you're going. The car has been pretty difficult for me, but I knew that it would make a big, a big impact than a picture would, but I can't do it anymore. So today is the last time I'll have her car out on this way. I will still do talks wherever they want us to go. I know she's saving lives this way, and I know she's looking down today, I'm never done. And I know she's proud of her whole class graduating. You know, she's with each and every one of you. And I hope that you guys take that message away. Distractive driving. It's real. It happens. And it does impact not just one family. It impacts several families, friends, people that come up on the accident scene. You know, they have to relive that every day. They remember seeing that. You know, I don't, like I said, I didn't get to go shopping for a prom dress this year. I don't get to plan a graduation party. I have memories. That's what I get. I don't want any of you guys to be put in that position. 
and you look beside you, you're probably sitting beside one of your best friends that could be gone tomorrow from a bad decision. When you get your license, it's a privilege, not a right. But that comes with consequences if you make wrong decisions. It can impact your whole family, your whole school, just like this has. This doesn't feel like it's been almost a year ago. It feels like yesterday. I hope you guys can come up and just take a look at the thought and what can happen. I sat out there for two and a half hours that night waiting on them to get her out of that car. I had no idea how bad she was. But a parent's worst nightmare is when they come up and tell you that your daughter's gone. There's nothing else they could have done. That's not. It wasn't good. I tried to make a positive out of all of this. I struggle with it every day. So it's just, I don't want to get out of bed. But I know that her brother needs me. And I know that we still have to continue the journey of trying to save lives. Technology has become huge in our life. But we have so many distractions when we're behind the wheel. And we sure don't need the phone to be one of them. Or alcohol. I'll always remember her smile. And I hope that each and every one of you that she has met will remember her. And I just hope that you guys take something away from this today. Just remember that your life is worth more than texting a message to your friend while you're behind that wheel. Because you can wait and talk to them in person or wait till you stop and text them back. So that you are safe. Anybody have any questions? How many of you guys graduating this year? How many of you knew her? I'm sure you all did. Just like anybody else, any other teenager, you know, she roll her eyes when I tell her, you know, be careful. I'll be fine, Mom. I'll be fine. Don't worry about me. As a parent, we worry all the time. Just remember, hug your parents when you leave. Tell them you love them. And make great decisions when you get behind that wheel. So you don't have your parents or your friends going through what I've gone through and what my son has gone through this past year. I didn't know if I could stand up here today. Watching my accident, that was like reliving everything again. It happened so quick, guys. This happened so quick. Just please pay attention. And I wish the best of luck to all of you graduating this year. And I know she's looking back on all of you. Thank you.
Thanks. Thank you, Dill. I know that's ungodly hard for you to do, but uh, we thank you for it. We'd like to take time now. Uh, we want to bring out our student actors real quick, give them a hand for the job they did. I thought they did very well. And if nobody has any questions, you're all more than welcome to come out here. Uh, talk to any of the first responders, the, uh, the people out here. Jill will be around, Tyler will be around if you want to speak with them. Again, we'd have uh, ministers and chaplains and, and school counselors around if somebody does need to talk. Uh, means let somebody know, we'll, we'll help you out with that. There's a monumental effort to put this on today by all the folks that are out there. So let's give all our volunteer uh, services and Lifeline and the Sheriff's Department and everybody that's a, a big round of applause. And you can use about the next 15, 20 minutes. You can come down, again, look at the car, talk to the officers, talk to first responders. I believe Lifeline is going to let you walk out to the helicopter to take a look at it. Um, stay in this general area, then we'll let you know when it's time to head back in.